One of the primary roles of any government is, of course, to keep the people safe. Yet after years of progress, crime is back as a political issue. Violent crime, such as knife crime, robbery, murder, are on the rise. Between 2014 and 2018, recorded robbery offences rose by 33%, firearm offences rose by 34%, and some knife crimes rose by an astonishing 60%. But this is far more than about statistics. We see this on our news each night, and we see this on our streets. Lives taken, families changed forever, and people's experiences of antisocial behavior are at the highest in over a decade. And the big long-term falls that we have seen in crimes, such as burglary and car theft, seem to be going in reverse. This hasn't happened overnight, but is a result of a real failure of political leadership. A new report from my institute sets out the three interplaying factors that have driven this increase in violence. Firstly, this government has enormously weakened the police's ability to get a grip of the problem. Officers are overstretched and under-resourced, and at a time when violent crime is on the rise. In this context, it should surely be patently obvious that stripping away policing is the last thing you should do. Partly as a result of these changes, we're now seeing a fall in the number of crimes being detected and criminals prosecuted. Secondly, new shifts in the drugs market are driving and funding large volumes of the crime we see today. The phenomenon of county lines, where vulnerable young people are essentially used as what is called mules, is opening up new drugs markets in towns surrounding major cities and fueling competition between the drug gangs. Thirdly, this government has eroded much of the architecture for preventing crime and for early intervention. Being tough on crime and tough on the causes of crime was, of course, the old slogan of the last Labour government, but it was more than a slogan. It was also a framework for governing, a commitment to changing the way we fought against crime in this country. That's why during our time in office, Overall crime was cut by 36%, domestic burglary by 54%, and violent crime by over 40%. It's also no coincidence that this was achieved at the same time that we put record numbers of police officers on the streets. We also cut crime by listening to what communities and police were saying on the ground, and therefore introduced a range of new powers to help police get to grips with different types of crime, things like ASBOs, confiscation orders, and other measures. And to prevent people from getting involved in crime in the first place, through Sure Start, targeted interventions such as parenting orders, safer school partnerships, we provided vulnerable young people with some hope and an alternative path to crime. Today, the landscape of crime and policing has, of course, dramatically changed. New technology has the potential to change the whole way the police work, but the government must catch up with what is possible and do so urgently. We therefore need a top to bottom analysis and review of crime. And as the report published by my institute sets out, a new national crime plan. This should focus on disrupting the supply and demand of drugs, tackling crime and its root causes, and restore not just community safety, but trust in our system. As part of this, early intervention must be supported and invested in seriously. So crime is back up the political agenda because it is back up the public agenda. As ever, we need a plan. It needs to be comprehensive and we need it now.